I recently went to my friend Fran Gallen's art show. Hi, Fran. Hi, John. Great to see you. Where are we? <laughs> We're at the Soho Arts Building. Oh, my Look. gosh. Yeah. You do create every day. I do. Can you talk about how this show came to be? Well, I've lived in South Jersey for 50 years and had various studios. I've been here in Haddon Township for 20 years. I'm the original tenant, found the building for the owner, the young and energetic studio manager, Samantha Carell. She's always doing a wonderful event. What's next? What's next? And it's just great. She's a powerhouse. Fran, you've been here from the beginning. We're going to have a retrospective. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> and what do we think of Fran's show? Fran's show is groundbreaking, and it's amazing to see all of her work finally in one place like this. It's a true staple in the community that we've been here 20 years now, and Fran's here to, to show honor for that, and let's hope for another 20. The first time I saw your work was at Rosenfeld Gallery, and you had these beautiful abstract paintings made out of strips. So you cut up old artwork and repurpose it? Exactly, yes. It's wonderful. It's like reuse, recycle. I was cutting my old artwork up into these narrow bands representing landscape. Some of the bands got narrower. I was doing mono printing and also cutting those up. And when you look closely, you can see the mono print alternating with artwork and old photographs. And then mixed media, pen and ink, some gouache, and anything that's available. You have work going back to your student days, which was where and when? The Philadelphia College of Art that is now University of the Arts from 64 to 68. I did take painting classes, but my major was photography, and I was totally in love with it and had a 4x5 camera, and that's what I did my senior thesis with. I did freelance for a while and had a dark room in my home, but also kept painting. When the kids started to arrive, painting at night at Fleischer and squeezing it in other ways made more sense for me, and the photography drifted away and became a lovely memory. Were you an unwed mother? <laughs> no. <laughs> Len Weinberg is, <laughs> is the other half. I have met that man. I'm <laughs> so glad that he's your husband. He's a very nice guy. Makes a fine latka. <laughs> Thank goodness in so many ways, yeah. <laughs> so except for photography, your beginnings were oil on canvas. What happened to change that? The great watershed moment of 1988. Up until that time, I was doing the big still lifes from the setup. I did a 10-day workshop led by Jacob Landau, wonderful gifted teacher, and no canvas, no oil paint. It was all aqueous media and work on paper and work out of your head. So that began a whole new era for me. Are there any shared themes that connect your older painted still lives with the newer work? I kind of have a thing for little bits of things or cast-offs or the things you don't notice. Even in those old still lifes, like the coffee cups, the used tea bag, those were more interesting than a traditional still life setup of lovely flowers and luscious fruit. You mentioned that you had taken some classes at the Pennsylvania Academy and gotten to be friends with Jimmy Luters. These two paintings of yours remind me of his late still lives. One is called Jim's Vase, and I took classes with him at Saunders Woods. He would set up still lives, the tall, thin, white vase that his friend created with Jim's incomparable arrangement. Anyone who knew Jimmy loved him. That includes me, wonderful painter and human being, supportive teacher in his quiet, humorous, slightly ironic way, but very sincere and meant a lot to me and was a big influence. 
Like Jimmy Luters, you also went from a long period of abstraction back to the still life. Yes, that was a shock to see the vessel shape appear again in 2015. I can date the actual piece. I was doing the narrow bands for quite a while, five or six years in various iterations, and had a large painted paper prepared with the pen and ink bands. And I just had this urge to copy, or loosely copy, a Bonard still life. I just loved it. And I was rather stupefied, but I've made peace. They're really, really beautiful. And another thing is your sense of color. I just love what color can do, the mood it sets, the intensity, the pleasure of gazing at something that is so intense and rich and takes your eye on a hopefully a wonderful journey. Who are some of your favorite artists? I see a lot of French Impressionists and Post-Impressionists in your bookcase. Matisse draws me, I think, because of the composition and also the color, of course. But also, Diebenkorn and Morris Graves, a still life painter. In terms of collage and use of material is Romar Bearden. Then there are women, Audrey Flack and Nell Blaine and Jane Frankenthaler. You said you attend services weekly at your synagogue. Does your religious faith play any role in your art? For a long time, it didn't. But when I did the workshop in 88 and had to work out of our heads, what emerged was Jewish-themed subject matter, titles, calligraphy. And that continued for about 10 years. And that was fascinating and mysterious. Here's a calendar I did in 2004. Women of Reform Judaism art calendar. A friend connected me. She thought my work would look good in the calendar, and I must say, it does. <laughs> these, these are all small pieces, five by seven, collage and mixed media. I understand you teach art. Yes, I've been teaching at the Fleischer Art Memorial. In the late 80s, I taught in the children's program. That was wonderful. And then in 2006, I started teaching and the adult program collage and mixed media. The teaching has really grown and become a wonderful give back. What my teachers did for me to be able to do for students is a gift and see people love it and be their coach, lay the groundwork, make a space for them to do that. What's this, Rand? This is a staff picture from 1995. There I am the Charles River Creative Arts Camp in Dover, Massachusetts. I went up for a week and was artist in residence, and we did this huge arch together. So you did a lot of three-dimensional work also, not too much of which is in your retrospective. Right, because it was all made out of cardboard. Some of it I've kept, the big columns, but the cardboard boxes that became the altarpiece for these big installations, they have gone their way. When Fran was artist in residence at the Charles River Creative Camp back in 95, she was interviewed by a little girl named Jessica Bloom. It's a bit disconcerting to realize that a little kid's questions are probably more insightful than my own. Anyway, I will read Jessica's interview while we look at Fran's work. Why and how did you become interested in art? It just kind of grew all the way through school. I remember painting daffodils on the windows in second grade. I loved it. It felt so good. I was then conscious that I loved to paint and I never forgot it. How old were you when you became interested in art? I always loved art. When I was in high school, my art teacher directed me to art college. What is your favorite kind of art? Collage. What kinds of art do you do? Well, I do installations. You get a lot of big elements and put them together. What color do you use most in your art? 
I love blues, turquoise, gold, and magenta, and everything in between. What do you use in your art? I like to use stuff that is common, like cardboard. I like to make plain things look very magical. Do you make a living in art? No, I don't. I can support the art, but I don't make enough to raise a family with it. Have you made arches before? No. Do you like McDonald's arches? Please. I never even thought about that when I had the idea of an arch for Charles River. Do you have any hobbies besides art? Well, I have three kids and a husband, and they're kind of hobbyish. Why do you like art? Because it's fun and it feels good to do it. Wow, Jessica, you should become a videographer. Fran, your show is really, really beautiful, and I urge people to come and see it. Thanks, John. It's an amazing experience, really. It's been quite something for me. Give people the where, when, and how to see your show. My show is in the Soha Building in Haddon Township through November 30th. Get in touch with me, and I will meet you there. You go, girl. (laughs) <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> and how to the potato lot? Because 